Okay, here we are looking into the cylinder head of um, a Fiesta 1.6 16 valve Durotec engine, petrol of course. Um, and the reason why we're looking in here is because the core plugs um, are starting to leak and they are letting cooling fluid into the space here, the well where the spark plugs sit. And if this fluid um, rises uh, high enough, of course, it starts shorting the spark plugs. So that's obviously no good. And of course, the f cooling fluid goes down and that's no good either. So the status we are at now, I'll just explain what I've done up to now. So first thing, drain as much of the cooling fluid out of the system as you can using the uh, plug at the bottom of the radiator. So at the bottom, as you see the car from the front, the bottom right hand corner of the radiator has a plug. You just need to turn it out, it has a thread. Right, now then you um, take off the air filter. That's just a couple of bolts and a couple of click fittings at the back there. So a couple of bolts at the front, or maybe three, depending on your model. A couple of click fittings that just fit into sort of click bushes. And um, you just need to lever the air filter off. You need to take all of the connections off, take the uh, this um, the crank sensor connection off. You get these off just by pushing that thing in and then pulling the plug off. So that usually goes into that blue socket there. You take that off. Once you've taken the air filter off, you take that off. And... Um, then you can take off the cam cover. Now the cam calf shover cover has, is plastic, and sometimes it's aluminium, but on this model it's plastic. It has a rubber seal in it. You should replace the seal whenever taking it off and putting it back on again, unless it's at very short intervals. And uh, so once I'd got all of that off, um, and uh, be careful of the oxygen sensor wire here, that's also um, attached to a bolt that goes into the cylinder head and attaches the uh, rocker cut, the um, cam calf cover to the cylinder head. So once you've unscrewed all of the bolts from the cam cover and, and there's one that goes in horizontally here, so from the side, so there you are, you see you need to get that one out as well. Um, then you can pull off the camshaft cover and then you'll see this. I've taken spark plugs out in the meantime. Be very careful when you take this out. There's no water in there when you take the spark plugs out. And if there's any dust and rubbish in there, try to suck out as much as you can with a vacuum cleaner. And also, while you're taking the plugs out, see if you can get a vacuum cleaner stuck down there while you're taking the plug out to make sure that no dust and grime fall into the cylinder. Now, you'll see that this plug um, here, the uh, freeze plug or the uh, anti-frost plug or the core plug, depending on what it's called in your neighborhood, this one I have already drilled a hole into. Uh, because I was going to try and get it out with uh, some kind of thread, either a, a metric thread or a screw thread, and sort of levering it out or pulling it out as you do with a kind of bearing puller. So using the thread to pull it out, but actually this doesn't work. And it, I thought I'd try to do it in a kind of refined way so that I wouldn't risk damaging the aluminium by pulling out a steel plug against the aluminium. And the way to, that most people do this is actually to tilt the plug by hammering it on one side so you get a kind of eyelid effect and then pulling it up on the other side and pulling it out of the hole. Now, of course, because this is, these are steel plugs, um, you might score the aluminium block as you take it out, but to be honest, I don't think there's any other way of getting these out. And you might damage other things trying to get them out, like the camshafts. <laughs> and I've protected these with plastic, as you can see. You should do that, of course, to stop moisture getting in and any grime. Now, what I did before attempting this was to spray WD-40 around the edges of these and I scraped out the dirt as well and I let the WD-40 soak in overnight. So that's the status we are now um, with a hole in this one, which I'm going to use for another purpose now. So getting this out with the screw thread did not work. So I'm going to use the eyelid method. I'm going to actually try to get a screwdriver in there before I start hammering it so that it doesn't fall in. Now that's the thing you need to avoid. You must avoid it falling into the hole because otherwise it will be much more difficult to get out. Not impossible but um, very difficult um, so I'm going to hammer this on one side with a screwdriver already in the middle of the hole there to prevent it falling in and then I'm going to try and lever it out once it's got twisted right so now you can see the the result and um, so that is by hammering it on the right hand side with a screwdriver in the hole that I drilled in it and um, to give it a bit of steerage so you can steer it slightly as you're hammering it so it doesn't automatically fall down the hole um, because these sort of wedge against each other as you're tilting it. So it's now tilted into the sort of eyelid position. And now I need to get a, um, a strong uh, pair of pliers onto that edge, the lip that's standing up there. 
and then wiggle it uh, together with the screwdriver shaft here. What I was hitting it with, by the way, was a, a very sturdy screwdriver with a, a hitting end on it. So you don't want to hit it with a normal screwdriver, but I'm hitting it with this one um, inside the rim first, and so as not to deform the rim itself. And then as it moves down and in, into the flipped eyelid position, then I hit it on the rim. Okay, so now I'm going to get the sturdy pair of pliers. I might use a mole grip, actually, a, a little mole grip on that edge there to try and pull it up out of the hole. Okay, so the tool that I found is, is most useful for getting these um, core plugs out, once you've got them tilted into the eyelid position, is, is this here. So this is a pipe wrench. And if you grab the lip like this, then you can actually leave it against the cylinder block on a place where it's not so sensitive. And this is, of course, the reason why you have to take the spark plugs out, because the way you should do this is to tilt the, tilt the um, core plug in, in this plane. So, so not, not like that in this direction, but like this. So each one gets tilted like that. That means you have a lot of freedom because you have all of this freedom here sideways if you take the spark plugs out to grab it and then lever it like this. So what I do is I put this in here and then I grab the edge of, of the plug and then by levering like this See, it's actually coming out. There we are. And there we are. So levering like that, not like that because you're going to find it very hard. You just don't have the space. So always tilt the plug this way before you try to pull it out. And this works apparently now really well. Right, the next thing to do is with a strong magnet on the end of a wire um, covered with plastic so the magnet needs to be taped or well glued onto the end of the wire. Oh, right, there we are. Um, I'm going to fish out any little bits of steel that dropped in during the drilling action. The drilling, yeah, so I'm just sort of moving this around inside there. Uh, because I'm, I'm sure some little bits of steel did fall in there. I don't want anything to get into the cooling channels and block anything that it shouldn't and so let's just see if that picked anything up yeah so there you can see it did pick up quite a lot of swarf so these metal filings and you really must try to get these out if you drill a hole in the in in the uh, core plug now some people hammer a hole in with a sharp screwdriver um, that actually might not be a bad idea so that might actually be better I'm going to try that on the other one actually because I, I don't really like all of this uh, metal filings getting into my engine. Right, so I've got all of my um, steel filings out and now I'm going to clean the surround there. It looks fairly good, but I'm going to clean it really well so there's no residue of anything left on there. And then I'm going to tap the new plug in. And uh, the new plug on this model, it's a 25 millimeter plug. Of course, it fits tightly. Uh, so I'm going to use um, actually a nut from a spanner set first inside the um, the plug and then a larger nut on the rim and very carefully hammer it in. Right, this is the setup for hammering in the new frost plug or core plug. This is the core plug, 25 millimeters diameter. And these are the nuts um, that I'm going to be using. And this is the the shaft. So I'm, I'm going to put one of these nuts on the end here, then I'm going to use it to hammer in this a little bit first. Now I'm going to use one of the smaller nuts um, that fits inside the rim for the first bit of hammering. And then once the plug has, has got in and it feels as if it's starting to settle in the shaft, then I'm going to use one of the larger ones. So I'll probably use this one because this one fits just on the rim and it's not too big. Of course it can't be too big otherwise you're going to damage the block the cylinder head as you punch it in. And um, to protect the end of my shaft here, which is actually a spanner, uh, a ratchet shaft, I'm going to use an old, um, it's actually an old brake cylinder, brake piston, sorry, brake piston that I've used for hammering a lot of things. So that'll protect that. So that goes on there like that and then I can hammer in the plug. Now. Um, when I said I was going to clean the hole, I'm going to clean the hole with uh, a bit of cloth and make sure that no stuff gets in there. And then I'll inspect the surround of the hole to see um, that there's no 
scoring. Now, there could well be scoring on yours. Um, it could be that these plugs have been replaced already once and that scoring has actually caused the leaking. So um, it's not absolutely forbidden to use that kind of liquid metal, two component liquid metal, just to put a tiny little bit round the edge of the plug. Don't put it round the uh, round the opening in the cylinder head, but just put it round here. Make sure you don't get any on the, the lower surface of this. It's only to go around the side, and you can do this by sort of mounting the plug um, on, on one of these with maybe a little bit of double-sided sticky tape, and uh, then you can hold it with your, um, your rod here and just to put a tiny little bit of this two component well mixed on it and that will help it just sort of seal and it won't make it impossible to get it out the next time. You don't want too much of this stuff, this two component liquid metal, because um, it, it will just stop other people getting the plug out and that will really annoy them. And the advantage of this is it's um, temperature resistant to a high temperature. Don't just use normal epoxy because that will probably not work in the long run. And a nice way to clean out the, the hole is um, to use your, your nut and wrench uh, extension and wrap a piece of cloth around it and then just sort of stick it down the hole and then, you know, wiggle it round and round like that. So that's, that works quite well. Okay, so there I have my nut on my wrench extension. This is the first one that I use for pushing in the plug. And now um, I, I've wrapped the, the nut in a little bit of... Uh, you can see that little bit of um, double-sided sticky tape and I'm going to put the plug over it like that right so so that I can hold it I just sort of work that on like that okay so now that's stuck well enough on the end that it won't come off but it will come off when I pull it out when it's jammed in the hole okay so now actually I have discovered that there's some nasty score marks on the um, rim of the hole in here where the plug goes and that's not good so that's likely to leak again so I am actually going to use a little bit of liquid metal around the rim of this plug as I put it in but only a tiny bit and as I mentioned before don't get any on the underside of it it's only on the rim okay so I discovered when looking at the cleaned rim of the hole where the old plug came out that it had been scored probably by someone um, wrenching the plug out in a rather uncareful way. So I've got some score marks there. So I'm going to have to use the liquid metal, the two component um, liquid metal that's uh, high temperature resistant. And basically I'm gonna mix a tiny, tiny little bit here with, with my finger and then smear it around the end of the plug. Or not the end, around the sides of the plug. I need to make sure that this comes out in equal quantities. And it's actually completely... Oh, I think one side's gone hard. This is the, the risk that you take when you buy things from, from shops that sometimes they've actually been sitting on the shelf so long that once one of the components has gone hard. So the black one hasn't gone hard, but the white one has gone very hard and I can't get it out. Ugh. See, the black one's coming out, but the white one's hardly coming out. I've read about this kind of thing happening. Okay, so there we have a little bit. That should be okay. I'm going to do a little suck backwards to make sure that you don't contaminate this. Right, and then you put this back on. Now I'm going to mix this with my fingers, and I have a rag here to wipe my fingers on. And the plug that you put in, the new one, must be completely dry. So here I go, mixing it with my finger. Uh, it is very, very, very hard already. <laughs> right, and that's, that's probably enough. And then I'm going to smear some on the edge of the plug here, which is very difficult. Uh, maybe it would be better with a screwdriver be some sharp thin surface like this. Yeah this stuff is obviously very viscous. Okay so now putting a little bit on here. Being careful not to get it on this side otherwise it will go into your cylinder block or your cylinder head or whatever is you're plugging. So I'm going to check that when I finish to wipe off any excess that has managed to get onto the 
the, uh, onto the flat surface. That was not on the rim. Alright, so that for example should not be there. And it should instead be here. That's probably about as good as it gets. Uh, just take off a little bit of the excess there. See where I need to put a bit more. Alright, that actually looks pretty good now. So just scrape off on the corner here any excess. Fingers are always good for this. Okay, that's that's acceptable. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get it better than that. I might make it worse. Okay, so now we have the the nut, which is um, stuck in there with a double-sided sticky tape, but it's actually smaller than the plug, so it will come out when I pull the shaft out. I've got my protector for the end of the shaft here, and now I'm going to put it into the plug hole. And like okay. Right, so now it goes down into the hole where the old one came out. And just gets tapped very lightly to start with. Now we'll put this protective thing on here, which you'll remember is the brake brake piston and watching this all the time as you tap it in so that it doesn't get an angle on it. Yeah, so that's, that's going in. Of course it has to be a tight fit, so... Okay, so that, that's how you get it started. And then, once it's gone in enough for you to be sure that it's not going to come out on its own, then you put a wider nut on the end of your um, ratchet extension there and that then taps on the rim of the plug not the body not not that bit of the plug but the rim and that taps it nicely into the hole without deforming it okay and this is what it looks like when it's finished so in this case I, I actually hammered it in in the in the uh, in all of the distance with a 14 millimeter nut um, which ends up being about 16 millimeters or 15 and a half something like that and that fits nicely into there without jamming and in the end I didn't use um, a larger nut for tapping on the rim because it just didn't seem to be necessary so there it is sitting in the hole the score marks I hope are now sealed with them with the liquid metal That'll go hard. I'll put the spark plugs back in in the meantime because I won't be working on this side anymore. And then I'm going to get this one out. So it's best to do them serially in, rather than in parallel, you know, in case anything drops into one of them. So this one's now finished, and now I'm going to drill a hole in that one, tap it on one side, and then lever it out. In fact, I might not even have to drill a hole. I think I'm going to try that one without drilling a hole. So I'm just going to tap it on one side with this uh, screwdriver and a hammer, get it to eyelid up. So that means on this side it will go like that. That's the direction I want it to go, like that. And then I'm going to lever it out with my pipe wrench. Okay, so there you see that one now tilted up. And now I'm going to lever it out with the pipe wrench. And um, I did that one without drilling a hole in it, so it seems to be possible.